Hey everybody, happy Thursday. And as always, the Thursday video are questions that you've asked, you know, you, on my live streams, in the comments, on my website, on Twitter, I gather them from everywhere. And today's question is, Katie, what is the link between bulimia and alcoholism? And I thought this was a great question, as I always do. I always think your questions are really insightful and interesting. And I've never talked about this, so let's get into it. Now, the first thing that came to mind when I read this question was, well, they both trigger the reward system in our brain. And when I use that term reward system, what I mean is there's like a little set of pathways in our brain that are triggered and they help release more dopamine and all those feel good chemicals and hormones and we feel really good. Maybe even kind of like a natural high. And that can happen by doing a lot of different things, meaning some get it through shopping, some get it through gambling, some get it through drinking and drugs and eating disorder behavior, self-harm behavior. It can be a lot of different ways that we trigger that reward system. And since alcoholism and bulimia both trigger that reward system, I believe that if we're, we have one, it's not hard to potentially get the other, or if we try to stop one, that's what I see most commonly. A lot of my clients will try to stop, let's say stop drinking as often, then they find their binging and purging more. Or if they try to stop binging and purging as much, then they start drinking more. And so we kind of do that teeter-totter in the same way we do the eating disorder and self-injury behaviors. It's like we're trading out an unhealthy coping skill for another. When I was researching for this video, I also found out that studies show that food deprivation, so when we're in that restrict portion of our eating disorder, it actually changes the pathways in our brain. So remember those pathways I was telling you that link to our reward system and give us all those feel-good chemicals and hormones? It changes them. So the things that maybe normally wouldn't trigger that reward high feeling do. And so you can see how that may change if we're restricting, it can cause a pathway to give us that reward feeling that normally wouldn't. So that could be unhealthy behavior, that could be things that are really detrimental to us. We feel good doing it, so we wanna do it more. And also, I wanna talk about how the cycle of bulimia you know, the restrict, binge, purge kind of cycle we get caught in can be very similar to that of an alcoholic where they try to not drink as much, they're restricting, right? Then, oh, we relapse, we start drinking, we drink way too much because as an alcoholic, we can't just have one or two drinks, we have to get fully drunk. So we binge drink, right? That's what I call it, binge drinking. And then we try to stop again. We go round and round and round. And so you can see how both of those cycles are very similar to one another. Research also found that those who have an eating disorder like bulimia, the guilt and shame that comes along after a relapse, let's say we binged and purged again, then they will go out and seek alcohol as a way to maybe feel better or forget about it or numb out. In a way that goes back to what I said before where we're kind of toggling between one coping skill and the next. So we're trying to fight the eating disorder thoughts and behaviors, but then if we engage in that, then we're like, ah, oh, now I feel bad, I'm gonna use this to feel better. And so we're kind of going back and forth. And the studies also talked about how struggling with both of these issues leads to higher levels of depression and anxiety, and also suicide rates go up, and there's a more increased chance that we'll end up in the hospital as a result. And so what I want you to really hear is that there is help available. Dual diagnosis is something that is very common, and there's tons of treatment centers out there to help you. Just know that you're not alone. Treatment centers don't come out of nowhere. That means there's people who need their help. And if you're one of those, I'll leave some links in the description so you can click over, you can check out programs, you can learn more about what the term dual diagnosis means because you're not alone. And the sooner we try to replace those unhealthy coping skills with healthy ones, the better we'll start to feel. And slowly we can rewire our brain so that we get that reward feeling when it's actually something good and healthy for us. I hope you found that helpful and let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, it's not just what I know, I wanna hear from you. Have you struggled with this? What do you think the connection is or what was the connection for you? Let me know, I'd love to find out. And I will see you next time.